So here we are, everything's completed, system's working well, and at the moment the batteries are charging off the renewable source, but it's end of a, a very long journey. We are talking about three separate forms of energy. We are talking about the grid, which hopefully is always there, but in this case it's not, so there's a lot of blackouts and brownouts. We're talking about the solar component, and we're talking about the batteries. We're also talking about the fact that Diane has access to an off-peak tariff. In other words, there's a time of the day between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. which she pays less for her electricity. Now, we have used that to our advantage because the brains of the system, the inverter charger, can say if there's not enough solar gain during, say, the winter months, we can charge the batteries off the grid. And because of that differential between the peak tariff and the off-peak tariff, it makes sense to charge the batteries off the grid if the solar is not doing it. Now, in this particular situation, We've got nearly 15 kilowatts of solar. We've got 7.2 kilowatts on one inverter and 7.2 kilowatts on another. So the exact figure is 14.4 kilowatts of solar. Now in Melbourne, we work on a per one kilowatt installed around about 3.5 to 3.6 kilowatt hours a day. We have the storage, 28 kilowatt hours total, but remember, we don't take all of the storage out. We're taking out about 80%. Out of that 80%, we've allocated a certain percentage to the loads every day. And in case the grid fails, we've allocated a certain percentage to service the loads when the grid fails. Because we don't know when the grid fails. Ideally, if the grid does fail, and we never want it to, but it does up here, it's gonna fail during daytime with the solar, so the solar will be there charging the batteries. But we always design for worst case scenarios that the uh, grid has failed at night time and the batteries have already been brought down considerably during the day and there's no, no solar component. So these systems aren't easy. There's a lot that goes into them. So as you can see, we've put some bollards up and that protects the system. The inverter charger then the two furnaces are mounted on 17 mil form ply, which we find very structurally sound. And then we've basically created a subframe behind that attaches to the, the shed structure. We have the signage up, um, signage on the battery cabinet, signage on the inverter, signage on the battery system DC isolator, the signage for the inverters here. And we have a signage obviously at the main switchboard. Batteries, Power Plus, lithium ion phosphate, four kilowatt hours, seven cells. So there's seven packs at 48 volts each. They're all parallel together. Inverter charger, 7,500 watts, the brains of the system. Two six kilowatt inverters that we have put 7.2 kilowatts on each, so we're overclocking them. Switchboard, which effectively becomes almost the main switchboard. So how it works in this situation is that the main switchboard is on the house, which is approximately 50, 60 meters. So we had to trench to this shed and then cable from the shed back to the main switchboard. So there's, in this case, we have a source and load. So the inverter charger is the first port of call after the main 63 amp breaker in the switchboard. And then the source comes into the SP Pro and then comes out. It has a 63 amp breaker for both the load and the source. And we've got a few other breakers in here. This one's the battery pre-charge. In this situation, we're using a two tiered switchboard, AC on the top, DC on the bottom. 
Now you may notice that there's no cables and we've gone for that particular setting, very clean. Um, there's no DC isolator because the Fronius Prima has a built-in DC isolator that works in conjunction with the DC isolator on the shed roof and on the house roof. So I'll just turn around and you can see that those DC isolators here. The inverter charger must be isolated from the battery. So we have a 250 amp DC isolator that is um, housed in this enclosure here and a very short run of 70 mil cable, 70 mil square, multi-strand, that goes to the DC bus bar in the back of the Power Plus cabinet. Now, these cells are each at 48 volts and there's seven of them. So to achieve the correct storage at 48 volts, they're all been paralleled and they all have their own individual circuit breaker. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries, the safest of all the lithium technology. Trentham's a beautiful spot and a lot of people from Melbourne are coming, are coming up to these rural areas. And what they're finding when they come up to these rural areas in conjunction with beautiful scenery, great atmosphere, the issue for them is um, the stability of the electrical supply. And that's why, and well that's one of the reasons why Diane decided to go the road of a hybrid system. In other words, solar and battery storage because of this inconsistency of supply out in these rural areas. And we're seeing a lot of customers coming to us talking about this.